We're going to be looking at vertex form of a quadratic. So there's three main forms of a quadratic. Your first form that we have here is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This form is known as standard form. The next form of your quadratic is y equals a, x minus r, x minus s. This form is known as factored form. So if you're given a quadratic and you use difference of squares, decomposition, GCF, etc., you're putting that quadratic in factored form. And lastly, and this is the form we're going to be focusing on in this lesson, is vertex form. Each of these forms has their own advantages, and they give you characteristics about your quadratic that you need to graph the quadratic and understand it. For instance, standard form is going to give you the y-intercept very easily, and we'll talk about that in a later video. Likewise, factored form is going to give you the roots. And lastly, vertex form, you guessed it, gives you the vertex of your quadratic. Um, all three of these forms actually give you the direction of opening, and again, we'll talk about that. Okay, let's take a look first at this idea of the direction of opening of your quadratic. How can you figure out if your quadratic is opening up or opening down? Where you look to decide that is you look at the A value. Notice your A value for your vertex form is sitting right here. This is in vertex form. And because this is in vertex form, I know my A value here is 2. If your A value is positive, your quadratic will always open upwards. The reason for that is this expression right here will always be greater than or equal to 0. Why is that the case? Well. If you take a look at the way that this is structured, you're taking any value of x you choose that you input, you're going to be squaring that value, which means x plus 1 quantity squared will always be positive, and then you're multiplying by a positive number. So this expression right here, independent of what you let x be, if you let x be negative 100 or let x be positive a million, no matter what you do, this term right here will always be greater than or equal to 0. So that means that as I choose values that are further and further to the right and left of my quadratic, this will get larger and larger and larger. For example here, take a look here. Suppose I were to let x equal 2. If I let x equal 2, here we'd have y equals 2. 2 plus 1 squared minus 3. y would be 2 times 3 squared minus 3. And then we'd have 18 minus 3 is 15. Okay, so that means that um, the point 215 is on my graph. But what would happen if I let x be 20? So now we're go going further to the right of my quadratic. What happens? So maybe, and again, I'm just estimating, maybe this is the point 215. Now let's say I let x be 20. What output do you get? Well, you're going to get 20 plus 1 squared minus 3. And then y is going to equal 2 times 21 squared minus 3. If you calculate that, you'll notice you get 879. So therefore, by going over 20, now we're maybe right here. We're at the point 20, 879. All right. Likewise, had I chosen negative values going the opposite direction, you would also have very, very large numbers because, again, you're squaring that value. Okay. So the direction of this quadratic is all determined by this leading coefficient a. On the other hand, you'll notice with the next example here, my leading coefficient is a negative 1. And because of that, this quadratic here is always less than or equal to 0. So this is always decreasing. So this quadratic will open downwards. And again, you can see that with some examples, right? As I move towards the outside of my quadratic, and we let uh, let's say I let x equal 2 this time. I'm going to get y equals negative 2 minus 5 squared minus 10, in which case we get y equals negative 3 squared minus 10. And this becomes, and this becomes negative 9 minus 10 is negative 19. Okay, now what happens if I let x be 20 this time? We're going to get y equals negative 20 minus 5 squared minus 10, and that becomes 15 squared minus 10. 
And if you calculate this on your calculator, you get negative 235. So again, you can see here, as I move towards the right-hand side, our first point was the point 2, negative 19. This next point at 20 was far lower. Uh, and you can see that direction is being pushed downwards because of that leading coefficient. All right, so to summarize here, if your A value is positive, quadratic opens up. If the A value is negative, quadratic opens down. It's as simple as that, but I thought it was important to understand sort of why that is the case. Okay, next thing here. Again, I'm in, quadra I'm in vertex form. I have a quadratic in vertex form here. I have a quadratic. I know that the A value is positive. So because the A value is positive, I know my quadratic opens upwards. So, you know, maybe it looks something like this. We want to find the vertex. So my vertex is located right here. That point right here is a minimum. That's a minimum value. So the question becomes is, how do we find that minimum point? What is the value of x here? What is the x value here? And what is the y value here? What is my actual vertex? Well, since this point is minimum, the question now becomes is, how can I make this as small as possible? Again, as we've discussed here, this expression right here will always be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, the smallest I can make this expression is zero. So how do you make this expression zero? You have to let x equal negative one. Because if I let x equal negative one, what happens here is the inside cancels. Any other value you choose will be larger than negative three. And you can try it out yourself. If you let x be 10, if you let x be zero, 100, negative 100, whatever you do, you will, it will give you a larger value than negative three. So therefore, this point here has an x value of negative one and a y value of negative three. This is my vertex. Okay, let's try to apply what we've learned here, try to identify the vertex. And while we're at it, we'll also extend our study to talk about the axis of symmetry here. So for our first example here, notice here the leading coefficient is two, so it's positive, so it's gonna open upwards. I wanna find this point right here. Like we said, what you need to do is you need to make the inside value zero. So I have to figure out what value of x will make what's in the brackets here zero. Well, that's just gonna be x is one. But if x is one, we saw here, the y value must be three. So my vertex here is one, three. Okay, let's try it again for the next one. Now, in this question, the leading coefficient is negative. So now this quadratic opens downwards this time. And I wanna be able to find this maximum point here. Well, you ask yourself the same question. For what value of x will, will the inside be zero? Well, in this case here, it's gonna be minus three. What's the corresponding y value? Negative four. So this is my vertex this time. Now, these questions also ask for the axis of symmetry. Your axis of symmetry, like we talked about, is a vertical line that cuts the quadratic into two equal pieces. Well, because it's a vertical line, it's going to be x equals to. x equals to what? You always grab your x value of your vertex. So this will be x is 1. Likewise, we have a vertical line. Vertical lines are always expressed as x equals to. x equals to what? Minus 3. So this is my axis of symmetry. Okay, let's continue on. Now, this is actually in vertex form. We just got to adjust it a bit to make it kind of fit the formula for vertex form. So there's my a value. I'm just going to write an x plus 0 squared minus 8. This still falls under the category of being vertex form. Now, in this case here, my a value is positive, so it's going to open upwards. So we still got our quadratic opening upwards here. I want to go ahead and find my vertex. So what are the coordinates of my vertex here? Like we've always talked about here, you want to make this the opposite. So how do I, what value of x will make the inside zero? That'll be x is zero. This value right here is my y coordinate. So my vertex here is zero, negative eight. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line. It's going to cut the quadratic into two equal pieces. Because it's vertical line, it's going to be x equals to, x equals to what? It's always going to be x equals to your x coordinate. So in this case here, this is x is 0. 
Okay, let's continue on. My next, my next quadratic here is in vertex form. The leading coefficient is negative, so it's going to open downwards this time. And now I want to go ahead and find the vertex. Well, again, ask yourself the question, for what value of x will the inside be 0? Well, the inside is going to be 0 when x is negative 4 this time. What's the corresponding y value? We have nothing written here. It must be a plus 0 at the end. So my vertex will be negative 4, 0. Draw yourself a vertical line. Therefore, my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 2. You just grab your x-coordinate of your vertex, and that'll be negative 4. Okay, that concludes this lesson. Uh, introduction to given a quadratic in vertex form. How do you find the vertex? How do you find the axis of symmetry? And how do you know the direction of opening? So please review this. Thank you.